Okay, so I decided to make this penannula brooch to go with the barrette set I made a couple of days ago. I'm going to start with the same steel, quarter inch stainless, seven and a half inches long. So let's get it in the fire, get it warm. We're just going to put points on either end, very similar to the points we put on the uh, other job. I want them reasonable length, not too long, but uh, long enough so I can put a nice little curl on the end. probably just about long enough. So let's do the same on the other end. Again we'll get this over and done with. You've seen me done do this a million times. Obviously it's slightly different on stainless. A little bit tougher. But the principle is exactly the same. So, before I go any further, I'm going to flatten this bit here, sort of in the middle. Well, not flatten it, but square it off, because I want to put a twist on it. So you can't put a twist on round. Although some bright spark will tell me you can. But anyway, so we're just going to take off, not you know flatten it too much. Just take it off so we leave some rounded corners because they look quite nice. They give it a softer feel to the twist. That's just about it, I think. Just take out a few more of the hammer marks on the other side. Just want to sort of blend that into the to the round or to the taper. So it doesn't. We haven't got any steps. Hopefully, and that'll just about do it. I think it's nothing fancy, but it's good enough. And we'll put the first twiddly bit on and again this is slightly more difficult on stainless um, but it's, it's exactly the same principle and I want to curl this up quite tightly like I did on the um, barrette set I don't want anything any threads or anything getting too caught Go. That one's curled up quite nicely, quite nice and tight. I think we'll leave that at that and see if we can copy it at the other end. This fire's really dirty at the moment. I bought some coal the other day, or coke. It's absolute rubbish. I get it, it's from my normal supplier, but they get it in from somewhere else, and it looked like floor sweepings. Tiny little chips, full of stones, stones exploding all over the place, and it's really dirty. Five minutes after you've lit it, it's the, cut, the fire is so dirty. So I think I shall make a little complaint next time I go in to get some. This one's not curling up quite as easily, and I'm having a bit of a job to hold on to it with these tongs. I ought to have made some better ones for the job, but I think that will just about do it. It's not far out. So, see if we can put a twist in. I'm going to leave about an inch at each end blank 
Just sort of eyeballing it. Whack it in and give it a twist. I want quite a tight twist on this. Um, again, the tighter the twist, the sort of smoother finish you get. Um, difficult to explain, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm just trying to find something or other. I don't know what I was trying to find there, but I'll do the other end. Again, just twizzler up. You see that bottom, how cold it gets, how quickly the jaws are drawing the heat out of it. And it's not far out. I, I could do with a little bit more, I think, down this, just looking at it. Yeah, down this far end, I want a little bit more twist, I think. So let's see if we can do that without affecting the rest of it too much. I guess really I should have done it with the with the gas because you can be really much more precise with where you heat but see now it's tightened up that end more than the other end. Hey ho! So there we go you see what I mean by it being tight it's it's quite looks quite smooth so next job good old bending jig again you can you know muck about doing this over the, the uh, anvil but if you want to try and make some money you want to knock these out as quick as you can so this little bending jig is just perfect for the job just turn it around and heat the other side Now I don't know why I did that. I put the wrong end in. I should have put the original end in and then pulled the short end round, but I didn't. And it still worked, but it was a bit of a arse about face way of doing it. But you still get the results. Nice, uniform, round bit of kit. I'm just going to level it out now. Make sure it's all hardly hissing it at all, just giving it a you know, little bit of a bump to get it level. A little bit of a titivate here and there. I think that'll do it. Quite a pleasing shape. So now we're going on to the pin. Now I've left this bar in the long length, basically because it's just so much easier to, to work with. I'm trying to muck about with a tiny little bit in the fire. Now this I want quite a long drawn heat on, a uh, long drawn taper on this. Um, I actually want to thin it down quite a lot from the quarter. If I'd got some 3 16th, I probably would have used that, but I haven't. So I'm just going to try and... Um, thin this down but I want to be careful I don't want to thin it down too far back because I've got to make the bit that holds it onto the to the rest of the brooch and I don't want that to be too small so I want the taper about the length of the or a little bit longer than the width of the brooch but still leaving some meat up the, up the far end stuff to use this stainless it's um, just unlike mild steel for some reason it works quite nicely at this dark or black heat I'm just going to try and get it down a little bit more. I 
And there's a little spider running around up there. Don't know if you spotted him. Now, I've got a split at the end. That's really come apart. So that's no good. So I'm just going to whip that end off. And then we'll draw that out again. I think I've been um, working it too cold for too long. And that's really uh, messed it up. Let's just get this bit finished. It's dragging out a bit. Right, so I've run a file over it. Just smoothed it all out. You can see there I've just taken all the edges off because I want it to go into the fabric easily. So that's where I want it to come to. So I'm going to cut it off about 15mm longer. There you go. And I've just put a tiny, tiny little chisel mark on my chalk mark just so I can see it in the dark. No, not in the dark, when it's hot. Oh no, spider! Oh dear. Don't know if you saw him. I hope he survived. It looks like I swept him off. Oh no, there he is. Running off to the right. So, we're just thinning this out to down to about, I don't know, sixteenth thick and about, I don't know, five sixteenth wide. And I want it about 15mm, 18mm long. About 18, 20mm long, something like that. That's not far out. And you wouldn't actually need to dress up the end really, because it's, it's sort of splayed itself out and rounded itself off quite nicely. Obviously if you had to cut it down you would have to, but I think I've got this about right, which is a miracle. Okay, let's see if we can get it to fit. Let's tap it around. And that's it. Job done. I'm just going to give it the traditional wire brush treatment, which I do with most of my stuff. I know a lot of people have a wire brush on like a bench grinder, but I prefer it on an angle grinder. I feel I can get in places a bit better. And there's all sorts of different wheels you can use, cones and flats and all the rest of it. So there you go. It's got the mat satin sort of finish that's a bit tight but I might have to just tweak that to loosen that up but that's an easy job to just either put a little screwdriver or something in the back of it and just ease it open so anyway there you go thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one